Parliament. Well, this debate has a weary familiarity about it. I think we've been here before. Um, I thank Mrs. Uh, Crichton for, uh, for coming here, and it is, uh, it's good to hear her contributions. But, of course, the key player is, uh, is our old friend uh, Herman, who has not bothered himself to, to turn up and uh, actually inform us what is really going on. So I can't help thinking that this debate is uh, essentially fairly pointless today. Nevertheless, I hope that, uh, that a deal can be reached on the MFF this week. Uh, and it seems that one thing, though, is now clear, and to this extent, I agree with, uh, with many of the other speakers, that once again, the EU is going to miss the opportunity to fundamentally reform its spending. It looks like uh, any agreement, if we get one, will be a fudge, a muddle, a botch, uh, as usual. A continuation of funding schemes that belong in another century. The continuation of the principle that first we set the budget and then we find ever more imaginative ways to spend taxpayers' money to spend that budget. Our leaders should, of course, have seized the opportunity to sit down, have a serious discussion about where the EU ad delivers value, where it spends money badly, and where money that we all know is blatantly wasted. And the reality is that today's budget would be remarkably familiar to those people like Roy Jenkins, Gaston Thorne, and commissions of the past. If we had asked those presidents where they thought the EU budget would be spent by 2020, would they honestly say that we would still be spending 40% of it on agriculture? I doubt it. The debate around the EU budget is symptomatic of all the, change in the, that need, all the things that need to change in the EU. And we need to stop thinking that only a bigger budget will solve the many problems of Europe. Instead, we need a better budget that prioritises our challenges at the expense of the enormous amount of fat that can be very easily trimmed from the budget. Now, many people in this debate this morning have said that this is a growth budget, and I suppose it is, provided you're a French cow, that will grow enormously with the European budget. And we cannot, in all seriousness, stand here in Strasbourg, this icon of EU profligacy, and say that there is no money that can be saved in the EU budget. Yet the issue of Strasbourg doesn't even get raised in the European Council. And yet again, I call on our President to raise it in his speech to EU leaders this Thursday, and perhaps with his new best friend, President Hollande. Now, of course, I know that the costs of coming here and maintaining this building are a drop in the ocean in the context of the total EU budget. But it would do us an enormous amount of credit if we can show that we can really shake off this expensive relic of the past. And that is the crux of the EU's budget. We are continuing to fund policies that may have made sense in the 20th century, as well as trying to spend money on the problems of the 21st century. If instead we focus on the problems of today and tomorrow, we could freeze the budget and still see significantly better results for our taxpayers. And what could be worse than just maintaining the status quo in spending? It would be to leave the EU spending unreformed and then give ourselves new tax-raising powers and own resources. Thankfully, it looks as though that's not going to happen. And we have seen in France, the country that we're in now, what happens when politicians think that the best answer to their problems is more state intervention, more government-funded programmes, more government and state administration. But I fear that whatever is agreed will fail to achieve any kind of meaningful reform. Instead, we will probably come away with the results that most heads of government feel that they can sell, most likely with a freeze in payment. And that would not be the best outcome, but it would be far better than allowing the kinds of increases that this Parliament wants to see without any reform to our spending priorities. Now, we've heard, as usual, a lot of vitriol thrown at the Council today, not least by Joseph Dole, who, I think, as President Hollande reminded us yesterday, seems to forget that it's many of his own Prime Ministers from the EPP group that are pushing for reductions in the EU budget. The matriarch of his own political family, Chancellor Merkel, is asking for budgetary restraint. And I know it's popular in this place and it gets a cheap laugh to have a go at David Cameron constantly, but he is not the only head of state, head of government, that is calling for reductions in the EU budget. This kind of war rhetoric really needs to stop, particularly in a time of crisis, where we should be working together with our national governments and not throwing bricks at them. Thank you, Mr.